Welcome back to Sunday School at the Tent. We are glad that you have already made a uh, point to be here. And those of you on the live stream, glad you're out there. Uh, we are calling this sem summer semester number one. So here we go. Uh, Aaron Goldblatt is, well, not that new anymore to our church. He's a just old hat now. Uh, uh, no, we just love him. And his heart is uh, for the things that this church stands for. And we stand for those things without compromise because we really truly believe that this is the message of the Holy Word of God, the Scripture. And we don't shrink back from proclaiming that. A big aspect of the, um, of the Word of God is knowing where you are in relationship to God's grace and how does God's grace actually ch transform your lives. And for the next six weeks, I'm going to invite Aaron to come up right now. Uh, for the next six weeks, Aaron is devoting himself uh, and to this particular uh, theme uh, on grace and what does it mean? There's several aspects of God's grace that we want to really understand. Let me not take up any more of his time and let's pray and ask the Lord to be with you as you uh, lead the study. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Aaron and his, uh, his family and all that they are uh, starting, Lord, as a just new residents now to Wareham and a big part of what's happening here at Grace Lighthouse Church. And I pray, Lord, for your, for your presence to be upon Aaron this morning and on us, Lord, those who hear your word. And I ask you to strengthen Aaron for this hour and uh, for half hour and uh, give him the words to speak and the words to share and the hearts to hear and the eyes to see. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Testing, testing. Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, church. Well, I couldn't be uh, more blessed and more just excited uh, to be with you this morning and just have this opportunity over the next uh, several weeks to look at one of my favorite topics um, throughout the entire Bible, and that is the grace of God. Um, this is the very core, the very uh, foundation of our faith. Uh, Peter, in 2 Peter 3.18, uh, exhorts the church to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, and that really is the goal here for us this morning, uh, and that's the goal for us over the next several weeks, is to grow in that knowledge. Uh, the grace of God, simply put, means the undeserved, unmerited favor from God. Uh, the word grace is, is an incredibly powerful word. Uh, it's used about 170 times throughout the Bible. And grace is such a foundation of our faith. And it's the one thing, in my opinion, that truly separates uh, Christianity apart from other belief systems, other religions. It's that we hold to the grace of God. It's not something that we earn. It's not something we deserve. Uh, but it's something that's freely given by God that we can receive by faith. Amen. Um, so we are going to, um, many of you may have received a small handout which gives a brief uh, outline of um, this lesson. Uh, but we're going to be looking into Ephesians chapter 2 this morning. Uh, and just a little bit of context about the book of Ephesians. Uh, the city of Ephesus, they were known for their idolatry uh, and pagan practices. Uh, this book was written by the Apostle Paul, who traveled to Ephesus on his third missionary journey uh, and stayed there for about three years. So this was not somebody unfamiliar uh, with the Ephesian, uh, Ephesian people in the, uh, in the church, at, church at Ephesus. Uh, they were primarily Gentiles, like the audience that Paul primarily wrote to, um, and they were living in a culture that was pagan, pagan that was very much um, different from what they were used to in their newfound belief in Christ. Um, so living in that culture, they needed uh, this letter of encouragement from the Apostle Paul to press forward um, in their, and to walk in their new identity in Christ. Um, and that was very important. Um, and uh, the book of Ephesians is referred to as one of the prison epistles. Uh, it was written by the Apostle Paul while he was under house arrest in Rome. So here he is under house arrest writing this uh, letter of encouragement. Uh, so we are going to look at Ephesians 2. 
the first 10 verses this morning. Uh, and before I do that, I'm just going to open us up with a quick word of prayer. Uh, dear Lord, thank you so much for your goodness to us, Lord. I pray that we would, um, through the study and the reading of your word, we would grow in our understanding of your amazing grace. Lord, I pray um, that your word would speak through us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so if you could with me, please turn to Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to read the first 10 verses. So I'll give you a, a, sec- a few seconds to, uh, to get there. Again, that's Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 1 through 10. Beginning in verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of ours, of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. Amen. Uh, these 10 verses that we just read together this morning are an incredibly clear picture of the gospel of grace. Um, the key verse and sort of theme for today's lesson in particular comes from verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Um, so that's the theme for this morning's lesson. Uh, so we're sort of going to look through those 10 verses um, that we just read. We're going to look at them uh, ver- sort of verse by verse, talk about some general observation I see, observations I see, and then jump into some applications and sort of how do we apply this um, as we seek to grow in our understanding of the grace of God uh, in salvation. Um, So beginning at the top of Ephesians 2, we see in verse 1, at the very beginning, in you he made alive who were dead in trespasses in in sins. Uh, So we see in verse 1, and this is on your handout, uh, the very first thing is that God alone is the giver of life. He is the giver of life. And it also says there in verse 1 of Ephesians 2, it, it discusses our former state. And our former state is this, we were spiritually dead. Uh, now, there's a lot of teaching out there regarding what, does, what exactly does that mean. Uh, to be very clear, uh, spiritual, uh, this means we're we were spiritually dead. Uh, it refers to our spiritual condition. Ultimately, our spiritual dition, condition before Christ is separation from God. That's really what ultimately uh, what darkness is referring to. Uh, in Genesis 2, God tells Adam, if you eat of the tree, you shall surely die. Well, we know uh, from, from reading the word that Adam did not physically die in that moment. Uh, but what ultimately happened as the result of uh, f- our fall, the fall of man is that there was a chasm. There was a separation whereby which we were separated uh, from God the Father. Um, so that's really when this, uh, when this chapter talks about uh, being dead and spiritually dead, that's ultimately what it's referring to. Uh, again, it's not a phys- we know it's not a physical death, but it's referring to a separation, a chasm, uh, by which we're separated from God the Father. Um, and, but there is good news there. Right up front, it says that he has made us alive. Uh, in Colossians 1, 13 and 14, it says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, 
for the forgiveness of sins. So I, I want us to see really this entire chapter as good news this morning. Uh, if you are in Christ, you have, even though you were dead, you have passed from death into life. That's important for us to just kind of sit with for a few seconds, so truly grasp that you have passed from death into life. In fact, um, from experience, I can tell you in having conversations with atheists, um, the one thing that they cannot um, argue against is your testimony, and that is the testimony of a changed life, the testimony of a life that was walking in darkness or that was residing in darkness and, and a life that had been brought into life. So that's incredibly, incredibly powerful for us to understand this morning. Uh, moving along in the passage, uh, verses 2 and 3, uh, in which you once walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works uh, in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Um, so really, this talks about, so we know that we were separated. Verse 2 and 3 talks about the nature of that separation um, and the nature of the old man. Um, the old man resides in darkness and is apart from, from, from God. Those, those, that's the nature of the old things. Uh, we know in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We know this morning that if you are in Christ, you are a new creation because of what is offered to you. Let us not forget that. That is so cri critically important. Again, moving along, I know we're a little short on time this morning, so moving right along. Uh, verse 4 says, but God is rich in mercy. Uh, we'll see much of this, this chapter where the character of God, uh, we understand what our former state is, and then it kind of goes into this um, ex explanation of the character of God. And one of those character traits is that, character traits is that God is mer a merciful father. He is rich in mercy. Uh, and I like to explain it that mercy essentially is the other side of grace. It's the, the other side of the coin. Uh, while grace is that gift that given us what we um, don't deserve, mercy is the Father withholding that which we do deserve. Uh, they really go hand in hand. And so to understand the grace of God, let us understand that our, our God is rich in mercy. Uh, we see this all throughout uh, the Old Testament, that God is merciful as he rescued the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Uh, another example that always comes to my mind uh, is that God is merciful in the account of Jonah, uh, both to Jonah, um, merciful towards Jonah, as well as to the people of Nineveh. We see God's mercy all throughout that account. A um, great account to look at if you really want to grow in our understanding of his mercy. Uh, but as mentioned, they go hand in hand with God's uh, matchless, matchless grace. Uh, looking, moving ahead uh, again to, to verse 5. Give me one second here. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Uh, again, this is very repetitive. Uh, it says that we're, we were dead. We were dead. Spiritual darkness. Spiritually separated. Uh, and it's important that we understand that. Not that we no, not that we stay there, but we tru to truly understand this matchless, matchless gift of grace. Let us understand what our former state was. Uh, so it's, this passage is repetitive. Uh, I know this morning I might sound a little bit repetitive. Uh, moving forward over the next several weeks, I might be a little bit repetitive, but that's on purpose. Um, there is perhaps, there's not much in all of Scripture that is as important for us to truly grasp as God's amazing grace. It is so incredibly and vitally important that we understand that. Um, in uh, Colossians 2.13, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed uh, it to the cross. The cross. That's what God did for us. We were that important to him. Uh, moving along, again, I know that we are uh, a bit short on time, so let's uh, move along this, in this passage uh, towards verse 6. 
and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Um, that's important for us to get this morning, uh, that that is our position as children of God, is in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Uh, no matter what, what you are, I mean, as, as a child of God, your life can be bumpy, could be up and down. No matter what experientially your life has looked like, if you are in Christ, if you have at one point trusted in Christ, you are in him. You are safe in Christ. Uh, moving along to verse 7, um, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. We see uh, in Christ Jesus uh, mentioned, mentioned twice. Um, God shows his grace towards us in Jesus Christ. And uh, we're going to move along because I'm going to discuss that more in depth uh, next week. Um, next week's lesson is full of grace and truth, where we're really going to take some time to unpack the identity of Christ and why that's important to us, as well as looking at the ministry of Christ. Um, again, so we're going to discuss that ult- uh, next week. And ultimately, uh, as kind of a sneak peek, Christ is the ultimate picture of grace. He is the ultimate undeserved gift from the Father. Uh, so it's very important that we understand that, and I will be unpacking that next week. So hope you're able to join us um, again next week here in person or on the live stream. All right, and we're going to look at um, the last few verses here. Uh, it says in verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Um, so those are sort of the penultimate uh, verses of today's lesson that I really want us to hold on to. Um, these two verses, especially verses 8 and 9, those two verses are uh, some of my favorite in all um, all of the scriptures, because it really captures what it is um, that we've that we've been given. Uh, there's a lot of debate in Christian circles, like what is you know what is this this gift of God um, that this is referring to? Some say it's faith. Some say it's the grace of God. Uh, I am by no means a Greek scholar, <laughs> but in it, it, based on the study that I've done, it's really referring to this entire um, concept. It's really referring to uh, the gift being that we are saved by grace through faith. So that being one item, our salvation is a gift from God. We don't, we don't, it's not something we deserve, but it's something that God gives us by his amazing grace. We cannot boast or take credit in our salvation. It is of the Lord. If we are to boast, let us boast, boast in him. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 1, 27 through 31, it says this. It says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised God has chosen, and the, thing, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that, as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Again, there's that theme about being in Christ. It says you are in Christ Jesus. Uh, Paul is writing that this is the identity of believers. Christ is our all in all. He is our righteousness, according to this passage. He is our sanctification, and he is our redemption. And since our righteousness before God is through Christ, we have no reason or standing to boast. Uh, Verse 31 of what I just read says, as it is written, He who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Uh, This quotes the prophet Jeremiah. 
Um, and the full reading of that is Jeremiah 9:24, And this says, But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. God is good. He offers salvation to any and everyone who calls upon him. Not because they deserve it, because he is a good and gracious God. Uh, we're going to take the last 10 minutes or so looking at this idea that salvation, our salvation is a gift from God. Um, it's a completely undeserved gift um, that we didn't work for. Um, I want us to take some time to really try, seek to understand that, because once you understand that, it really changes everything for you. Uh, it's an important concept concept to grasp because our lives can then change from a have-to life to a thank-you life. Uh, there are many Christians walking around, I know much of my early, early years in the faith, walking around with this sort of this burden that I owed God or I really, I had to, I was, I was guilted into behaving for God. But you know, when I truly seek to understand the grace of God, I can now live my life as a thank you to God. Um, 1 John 4.19 says we love him because he first loved us. Uh, we want to meditate on scriptures like that. We want to understand what does it mean to walk in the freeness um, that, that Christ has provided for us. Um, so with that, again, we're going to spend the next, um, now about nine minutes, um, looking at what does it mean um, that our salvation is a gift. Um, many of these are kind of basic concepts, but I think they're important for us to, to grab a hold of. Um, as we give up thanks and worship to God for this, for this gift. Um, number one, we're going to look at that our salvation is a gift by God's grace. Um, that's the first and the ultimate point um, this morning. Uh, there's nothing that we can do to earn our right standing with God, um, and that's important to know. Uh, if something is earned, it is no longer a gift. Uh, if I go to work for the week and my work provides me a paycheck at the end of the week, it's important to know I, I appreciate my work paying me, but that's not a gift. That's paying me in exchange for what I do over the course of the week. So it's important for us to understand that um, this morning. Um, Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, so the, our very eternal life is a gift uh, by God's grace. Uh, number two, a gift is free, is 100% free to the receiver. Uh, this is difficult to understand because as we live this life, we are conditioned to think as people that nothing is truly free. Uh, in fact, when we hear about something being free, automatically our antennas go up and we begin to question Oh, this can't really be so. Uh, I have a quick story I can share about this. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, I was hungry, as I often am, and I went to, uh, went to KFC. I picked up uh, a chicken, chicken sandwich meal, um, came home. They had put the meal in this big, big shopping bag almost. I had gotten home, and uh, as soon as I get, came home, I pull, pull, pulled the meal out. Uh, I was excited. I was hungry. Uh, even to add to my excitement, at the bottom of the bag, I found this coupon and big, it was a big yellow coupon with big bold letters uh, that said free chicken sandwich. And I was excited um, because I love free and I love food. So what could be better than free food? Um, so I was excited about that. And my excitement was quickly dissipated. However, I saw um, in small print at the very bottom of the coupon, it said, with the purchase of a chicken sandwich. Well, that wasn't really a coup that was, wasn't offering me anything free at all. Uh, and there, was, there were actually two ways in which that wasn't offering me something free. Uh, it wasn't offering me anything free because um, I had to buy something in order to get what they were offering. So it wasn't free in that respect. Um, and it wasn't free either because I had to buy food in the first place in order to get the coupon. Uh, the, 
lady at KFC was very nice, but she was not standing on the street corner handing out uh, free chicken sandwiches or free coupons for chicken sandwiches. Uh, so that was kind of a silly, simple illustration. But at that point, I began to think, I'm like, wow, no wonder this gospel of grace isn't so easy, isn't so, so easy to understand or isn't so easy to believe. Um, you know, I believed it for a second, but I, I began to question, and that's when I noticed the fine print. Um, so it, it often is said that nothing, is, nothing in life is truly free, and, and that, that proves out in our experience and what we see around us. Um, so, um, anyway, that's just, just an example to show, to show us that, um, the gospel of grace is different in that it is truly, truly free. Uh, Romans 4, verses 4 and 5 says, Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but to get debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Um, thirdly, we're going to look here. Uh, once a gift has been given, it cannot be taken back. Uh, we're going to move a little bit quickly because I only have a few minutes left. Uh, but basically, I want us to understand this morning that a gift, true, something that's truly a gift, involves a permanent transfer of ownership. Um, in John 10, 28, Jesus said, And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Uh, not only can you not do anything to earn your salvation, you cannot do anything to keep your salvation. The very nature of your salvation is eternal. And your life is going to have ups and downs, but thanks be to God that in your downs, Christ still holds you. Let us, amen, amen. And we see that all throughout the Bible. We see um, the security, security of Christ. Um, next, we're going to look at um, the gift of God is available to all. Uh, it is available for Jew, Gentile, young and old, man and woman. Uh, Romans 10, 11 through 13 says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a glorious, glorious invitation this morning. Uh, this invitation was made to Nicodemus in John 3. Uh, it was made to the Samaritan woman in John 4. Uh, it was made to the Philippian jailer in Acts 16. And, and yes, the invitation was even made uh, to the thief on the cross. If you are here this morning or on the live stream and haven't trusted in Christ, haven't received this free gift that's offered to you, well, just know that it's offered to you. You can, um, just by faith, receive this free gift. And uh, lastly, we're going to look at um, just a few final kind of take-home application points. Uh, and really, this is an application for today's lesson as well as looking forward. Um, and again, I only have two minutes here, so we're going to be, uh, going to be brief on these. Uh, but number one, let us not forget the grace of God that saved us. Today's lesson and moving forward, as I already mentioned, is going to be highly repetitive. Uh, and that's intentional. The scriptures are highly repetitive. And that's because we should not be forgetting the grace of God. Grace is the foundation of our faith. As excited as I was to potentially get a free chicken sandwich, how much more should we be excited about the incredible, amazing grace of God that brings salvation, brings the salvation of our souls? Amen. Amen. Number two, the second application point here is let us walk humbly in this grace. Let us boast only in the Lord who brings salvation. Let us walk in it. And the idea of humility isn't to think lowly of yourselves, as some might suspect, but the idea of humility is to really have correct thinking and correct perspective on, on not only who you are, but whose you are. 
And we are, as mentioned a few times in today's lesson, we are in, if you have trusted in Christ, you are in Christ this morning. Uh, and let us walk humbly in this matchless grace. And lastly, our last point here uh, for take-home application is let us encourage one another in the grace of God. Uh, Paul was reminding this young Ephesian church while he was under house arrest in Rome and, and, and under very difficult, um, difficult circumstances. If he can encourage the church in these circumstances, we can all encourage one another to let us walk in this grace of God. It's very easy for any one of us, any one of us, in how we live to fall into works-based thinking. May it never be. May we keep on reminding each other to walk in the knowledge in the God who saves us by his grace. And let me close us in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this, this day that you've given us. We're so grateful that you have saved us uh, by your grace. Uh, and I pray that these, um, the word um, that was read and um, this discussion would be fruitful, Lord, that we would truly hold on to um, the knowledge of your grace, Lord, and that we would grow in that. And uh, pray that you would be with us this morning and bless the rest of the service. We're so grateful for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.